Welcome back to my channel, Custom Scrapbook Design by Christy Stubbs. I had so much fun with my Scrap and Saturday layout that I have decided to do another quick layout. Hopefully it'll be quick. I am using the Simple Stories Simple Vintage Winter Woods again. This time I'm going to do a two-page spread and I have chosen... Um, some of the kind of accent paper, I guess, um, or more like the solid papers that coordinate with the collection. And I'm going to try and use this um, blue side. They call it a blue. Now it's kind of a teal green, um, more vibe to me. Now on the camera, it does look a little bit blue. I think I'm going to use these four by four elements. And then I also grabbed my scraps from the last couple layouts that I've done. And this is the last one where I did the um, fussy cutting. And this is the back side of it. Not sure which side I'm going to use. And then I did pull in this full sheet of the barn wood and the pink snowflakes on the back. I do believe those are the ones I'm going to use and um, we'll see if I can get my vision to come to life. Now after my last layout and not cutting off that branding strip right away, that's going to be the first thing that I do. Um, that proved to be a little more challenging last time just because I <laughs> waited until I had stuff on my page to do that. So I'm going to take my own advice and get that cut off right away. All right, and then I think I'm gonna try and use up quite a bit of ephemera and foam stickers and that type of stuff on this particular layout. Um, I don't have a, any idea yet as to what size pictures I wanna use, but this is a somewhat Pinterest-inspired um, layout. I did come across one that I liked. I'm not duplicating it exactly, but it was on the Simple Stories um, page. So I'm sure you could go to uh, Pinterest and find that there. I'll try and post a photo of it at the end of the video, and that way you can kind of compare my inspiration um, versus what I actually end up putting together. I love Pinterest for inspiration. I very seldom have a layout that looks anything like <laughs> my inspiration. I, I take that inspiration and um, it kind of just feeds me for my own idea and I end up with something totally different. This one may be, may be similar, we'll see. So I'm going to just be taking some strips and I think I want to go six inches wide and carry the main patterned paper kind of down the, um, the right side of the one and the left side of the other so that when they are side by side it's kind of down the center bit of this. Um, now the layout that I am inspired by once again uses a tear tool. So I am going to be using my tear tool and I do I do want to go, um, you know, six inches on each side. And this sheet that I have left here, oh, is six and a half inches. So it's a little longer. And I think I'm going to just go ahead and leave it a bit longer. And I think I'm going to try and do about three inch roughly actually we're gonna go four four inch strips um i think that that will work really well for what we're gonna do and i'm gonna leave the jagged edge at the top and once i kind of put this together you'll see that it's not really gonna matter so i've got two pieces for here and then I'm going to take and do a 
four inch, roughly, roughly a four inch piece here. So that's basically in half. So I have enough to use this pattern, both sides of this pattern if I want to. So I can use the pink side and the pattern side with the birds and the pine boughs. And what I'm going to do is just layer these. Let's see. I'll go this way with this one. And this way with this one. And whichever one I decide to put at the top, obviously I'll have to straighten out the top of that one. So if we go with a pink, It's already straightened out. And then we've got the pine boughs. And which other one did I have? I do have this scrap of this, that snowflake or the barn wood. We could use either one of those. And I kind of feel like four of them isn't quite enough. I feel like maybe I want to do another piece. Either that or maybe... Maybe the white isn't enough. But I, I don't feel like there's quite enough contrast between those two necessarily. So I may not end up using this one. We'll see. Let's um, grab... The other barn wood sheet, we're gonna pull that one in here and use the snowflake side of that one. I'm not even gonna measure, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball what I think would be around that four inch mark. Um, it's not really, really necessary for it to be measured. It's gonna just be tucked under the other papers anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And I think, I don't think I want to start it right at the top or at the bottom, have it be flush. I think we want to go ahead and rip the bottom piece. And I did use the other, the other edge, so I've got a little bit of jaggedness along that bottom. Pull those white ones out of there for for now and I was gonna line them up straight up and down but I think that I'm actually going to offset them now which means I think I want to tear that top of that one as well and I think I'll use that smaller jagged edge again if I can get a hold of that paper And I am going to offset that. So we're going to want to tear the top of this one as well. And again, I'm going to use that smaller edge. I really use the heck out of this tool. I really like uh, the look that it accomplishes with the tearing. I do have a couple other tearing rulers as well. But this one tends to be my favorite one. Right, and I'm going to rip this one as well. Get a hold of that. I didn't quite keep a hold of that. And I can't quite get underneath. That paper with my fingernails. All right. There we go. Let's see if we have enough to carry down that whole page or if we're gonna wanna add another sheet of something. I 
actually like the look of that. Something along that line. Try and kind of keep it even as far as your spacing on both sides. We'll want to kind of line that up. I'm going to pull these two apart. Because I'm going to want to cut these. And I think the easiest way to do that is I'm... If you follow along with me, you know I'm just going to eyeball this. So roughly right here, and I want to make sure I'm cutting straight, so I'm following the lines on the paper to make my cut. Now this next one, I don't really have a, a line to follow, but what I'm going to do, it's roughly right there, line the, this edge up. Being as I made all of that jagged, it uh, makes it a little more challenging to cut the paper straight. You might want to cut your pieces to the length that you want them before actually tearing your edges so that you've got a straight edge to place in the cutter to make sure your cut ends up being where you want it. But this is actually working out. There's enough lines on either the papers or being able to put it on the cutter. Okay. So now that I've got those cut, I'm going to take and ink all of those edges because I don't seem to be able to do a layout without inking. So I'll go ahead and do that and speed that up and then we'll come back and put it together. Okay, I've got all of those inked, so we're gonna go ahead and hook all of that down and I'm gonna start at the bottom and while inking, you know, I had a piece that was torn and I intentionally folded it up and I tried to kind of do that in a couple little areas, just fold some of that paper actually up and um, you can curl it over a little bit. So I did do that, uh, but I am going to start at the bottom because we're going to layer, we want the layers to come down over the top of the bottom pieces. So, I think I'm good with that. I'm just taking a look at that. These two are pretty, pretty similar. I could swap them out, but I like them the way they are. Now, I want to determine what size photos we're going to put on this layout, and I believe... I shared with you guys a couple weeks ago that I kind of had made these uh, templates for the different size photos. So that I could kind of get an idea as to what size photos I maybe would want to put on a layout. So we're going to go. Actually, I don't want those four by fours there because I am wanting to use some of these cut aparts and they're four by four. So we'll leave those four by four there, but they're going to represent the cut aparts rather than actual photos. And I think we'll go with a three by five photo and a three by three. I think we will just basically mirror that on the other side. I'm 
not positive if I want to go three by four or three by five. So we will wait and determine that for sure after we do some of the decorating. So I do want to use some of these four by four cut aparts. I want to use up some of this sheet. I don't love the B side of it. Uh, the horns, not my favorite. So we're going to try a couple from the middle here. I think we're going to use two out of these three. And I think I'm going to use this pink and pull that pink from there. So we're going to do those and then I think we're going to do a little cluster of ephemera or foam stickers as well. We may possibly even dive into these uh, chipboard stickers. I haven't opened those up just yet. And then we've also got some of the enamel dots here. But while we are taking a look at this, I want to decide what color I want to use for the photo mats. And I think being says my last two layouts, I have used the white. I think I'm going to follow through and use the white again. So let's go ahead and cut a few of those photo mats. And then that way we can set those in place as well. Take a peek at those. All right, so I like the way that that looks. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink the edges on these. I'm gonna leave the white white. And I'm also going to round the corners on these. Actually, rather than leaving them so square, let's find our tearing tool again. I don't know about you guys, but um, when you guys craft, do you lose things as quickly as I do? I seem to make quite a mess out of my desk and lose things rapidly. I'm going to take the tearing tool and I'm not measuring anything. I'm just going to tear part of the top of that off if I can keep a hold of it. So that we mimic some of that tearing. And then I'm going to tear, I think I'm going to tear the side on this one rather than well, let me think about that a little bit. I actually think I'll tear the bottom. There's plenty of room there to be able to tear some of that off. Beans, as everything else is torn top to bottom, we'll stick with that. All right. I think that's going to work well. So I'm going to go ahead and ink those. Now that that's inked, we've got the basic layout. And of course, I can't do everything straight, so we're going to go ahead and angle that 4 by 6 photo mat, I believe. And then we'll leave the other ones straight. Let's pull some of the foam stickers in here and kind of preview that. In the last video I showed you that I like to cut those apart while they're still on the plastic. And then that way you can kind of move things around and decide whether or not that's actually what you want to use versus putting it down and getting stuck with that decision. So, 
we'll preview a few of these and then we'll pull some of the ephemera as well. Maybe one more of the foam stickers. Let's see what we've got here. I've already got winter days, chill, hello. Got the little girl. And I think we're gonna go ahead with another little saying. The cold never bothered me anyway there. Let's take a quick peek at what we've got. Four stickers on the sticker sheet. I haven't used a lot of the sticker sheet yet and I love them. So I would like to be able to find a little bit of use for those. And maybe last layout, I didn't, I wasn't able to utilize these and I think maybe I might use them this time, but looks like we're gonna need to put down our photo mats. So let's go ahead and start sticking some of this down. Okay, now let's take a look at some of those stickers on the sticker sheet and see what we can do with those. I think we're going to go ahead and go up on top of that photo mat so the picture will line up with that sticker. And I think we're just going to go ahead and put one of those on all of the photo mats. I'm just going real close, about an eighth of an inch onto those mats. And if I went too far, the pictures can cover that up. So that is not a big deal how those go on there necessarily. You don't have to be super careful. It does look like this one might be slightly crooked. I want to fix that. Okay, so we've got those on each of those pictures and then I think we're just going to take these little sayings and put one of those under each of the four by under one of the four by six and over the top of the other I'm going to pull that pink Okay, and let's see. Let's take a look at the ephemera pieces now. Let's see what we've got there. And then I do have the dots. Do we want to use any of the bingo cards? They're kind of big, I think. Lots of ephemera pieces here. Okay. 
And I think we're going to pull we're going to pull some of these chipboard stickers into this layout. I hadn't opened this as of yet, but I kind of am wanting to use this little banner piece here. And I could just pull it off the backing. But I again with this, if you leave that backing on there, you can kind of preview where you want to put it before sticking anything down and then you're not 100% committed because as we all know, I'm not real good at committing right away with this stuff. So that's my little trick for being able to do that and see how that maybe isn't actually gonna work. It might be a little too long. Let's pull some of this extra stuff off of here. And I actually think no, I don't love it. I think I'm backpedaling on that one. We're not going to use that. But we might use this winter. And now by leaving that backing on there, and just put that in my stash, and it's not a big deal that we're not using it yet. And I'm not sure I'm going to use this one either because I've got winter days here. Although I guess I'm not committed just yet. All right. We're going to switch this out. And it's going to read Hello Winter across there. Okay. This is why I don't stick anything down. Got a couple more of the hearts. And they look like fabric hearts. They've got some real nice detail to them. Kind of like a corduroy. Okay. Boy, we're really starting to use up some of this collection. We're not going to have a whole lot left. I should be able to, I plan on doing at least one more set of layouts, if not two with you. So stay tuned for that. But I did get some more Simple Stories um, collection in, and I can't remember the name of the collection, but it is absolutely gorgeous as well, and I am dying to actually start using it, so I want to quickly move on from this collection now so that I can dive into that next one, so we might be seeing a few more videos popping up here, getting this collection used up. And again, I always add just a dab of glue to whether it be the chipboard stickers or the foam stickers, I tend to add an extra dot of glue to make sure everything sticks really well. And I just need to ink a couple of these little pieces of ephemera, make sure they're gonna pop up. And this layout has gone together rather quickly. You know, we're gonna have a nice little selection of winter layouts done by the time we're done with this collection that will really hold quite a few pictures for you. Okay, I'm liking the looks of this side. We'll get the winter put down, and I think we've got the right side taken care of. Can't tell if I've got the backing off of there or not. Yep, I already have it off. Add a little bit of glue.
Okay, everything on that side is hooked down. Now the only thing I'm gonna add to this is some of the dots, and I'm gonna go with the pink. And with these, I always add a dab of glue as well. And these can be get challenging to get placed exactly where you want them just because they're rather small. I've seen other designers handle them with a pair of tweezers and I end up flicking them across the room and losing them until I find them attached to something later. So I tend not to use the tweezer method because I just end up losing losing the dots. Let me try this. Well, that method worked pretty darn good. And with these, you have to be real careful. With the glue, it makes them a little bit slippery. So you want to just kind of gently pat them in place. All right. So... There is the right side. Let's get the left side all hooked down. And on this side, there's not really a lot of room next to the cut apart, but there is some room right here and I'm going to put those there. And I'm just using one of each of the three different sizes. Boy, that method actually works pretty slick. Okay. All right, let's take a look at those side by side, see if there's anything else we want to add to them. But I think we might Okay, I think we are we're done with that layout. That went together rather quickly, used up a lot of the scraps basically from the other layouts and then I did use the cut aparts there. I'm going to stamp these and then you will, I'll have pictures at the end of the video so if you stuck it out with me again for this layout thank you so much. I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate your support. Please give my video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to the next layout. Bye for now.